January 1933, 14 years after the defeat of Germany in the First World War, Adolf Hitler came to power. In violation of the Versailles Peace Treaty, Germany at once began rearming. In March 1936, in violation of the treaty, Germany reoccupied the Rhineland. In March 1938, in violation of the treaty, Germany absorbed Austria. In September 1938, with the Munich Pact, England and France yielded to Germany large areas of Czechoslovakia under Adolf Hitler's threat of war. With this pact, Germany guaranteed peace in Europe and the independence of the rest of Czechoslovakia. In March 1939, Germany violated the pact and occupied the rest of Czechoslovakia. Germany was also threatening Poland. And now, on March 31st, 1939, the British government, at last resolving to halt Hitler's Germany, gives Poland an unconditional guarantee of military assistance. This guarantee will lead to the outbreak of the Second World War. Colonel General Walter von Brockich, Commander-in-Chief of the German Army. General Franz Halder, Chief of Staff. Lieutenant General Alfred Jodl, Operations Chief of the OKW, Hitler's Supreme Headquarters Command. Colonel General William Keitel, Chief of the OKW. Admiral Erich Rader, Commander-in-Chief of the German Navy. Summoned by the Führer, these officers are here for an urgent meeting on the British military guarantee. You have heard Ribbentrop's news? Yes, my Führer. My will is fixed and unshakable. You will proceed with the planning for Case White. And for uh, the starting date? September 1st. Does the Führer's decision uh, present uh, problems for the military? Joachim von Ribbentrop, Does Hitler's foreign minister, vain and incompetent. He has succeeded in earning the dislike of almost everyone in the German government. My Luftwaffe will be ready September 1st, mein Führer. If necessary, even sooner. Field Marshal Hermann Goering, commander of the powerful German Air Force, My in the Third Reich, second I only either. to the Führer. With all due respect to the Field Marshal, mein Führer, you give us only five months to prepare for general war. It would require at least a year. We do not have a year. It is my belief that if the attack on Poland is started with sudden heavy blows that gain rapid success, general war will be avoided. But if England and France do march, I'll cook them a stew. They will choke on. City Music Hall. Oh, Pug. Oh, look. You can see him now. Oh, my God. 
Alter. Oh, that prison haircut, I declare. He's such a simple looking man. The rest are all so gaudy. Der Marineattaché der Botschaft der Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika. Und Frau Henry. Willkommen in Deutschland. Danke, Herr Reichskanzler. Frau Henry, ich hoffe, Sie fühlen sich wohl in Berlin. Um ehrlich zu sein, Herr Reichskanzler, ich habe gerade mit der Haussuche begonnen. Sie werden keine Schwierigkeiten haben. Aber es gibt so viele herrliche Berliner Viertel. Ich bin ganz verwirrt. Colonel William Forrest und Frau Forrest. There's Ribbentrop and Goebbels. Would you like to meet him? Oh, please. General. Commander Henry. General von Roon. How nice to see you again. Excuse me. Well, thank you for getting us here. What do you think of the Führer? Not much like the image in the New York newspapers, all horns and a tail. <laughs> no, not at all. With Case White, the invasion of Poland, only 20 days away, Mussolini sends his son-in-law, Count Galeazzo Ciano, the Italian foreign minister, to Hitler's mountain retreat. My Führer. Graf Ciano. Frau Eva Braun. Charming and urbane, with the ability to speak fluent German, Ciano has been charged with a mission of relaying to Hitler Il Duce's decision not to enter into any armed conflict over Poland, despite the vaunted pact of steel between their two countries. closes the plans for Case White to Ciano. He must attack by September 1st, because the autumn rains start October 15th. He needs six weeks. Two weeks to smash Poland. Two to four weeks for Mapa. Ciano warns Hitler that Italy is unprepared for war. He explains that the Pact of Steel was signed in anticipation of war in 1942, not 1939. He proposes another Munich-style conference. Maybe the West will give in again without a fight. Gute Nachrichten bringen. Moskau hat sich bereit erklärt, einen politischen Beauftragten von mir sofort zu empfangen. Zu welchem Zweck? Volle Normalisierung unserer Beziehungen. Die Briten und die Franzosen sind doch in Moskau, um eine Allianz abzuschließen. Das ist, was sie sich erhoffen. Wir führen schon seit Monaten geheime Verhandlungen mit der Sowjetunion. Ich habe sie überlistet. There are snags in the Nazi-Soviet deal. The Russians are getting tougher and are in no hurry to proceed. Valuable time passes. Telegrams fly back and forth. Ribbentrop has offered to fly to Moscow, 
with full powers to conclude a pact. Weighing on Hitler's mind is the knowledge that the British and French military envoys are in Russia still negotiating. Finally, he comes to an unprecedented decision. He will humble himself and write a personal letter of appeal to his great enemy, out of hand. Stalin. Something has to be done about it before it is too late. The tension between Germany and Poland has become intolerable. A crisis may arise any day. I therefore propose that you receive my foreign minister on Tuesday, August 22nd, but at the latest, August 23rd. I should be glad to receive your early answer. The time pressure continues to grow. 24 hours have passed and still no reply from Moscow. Adolf Hitler is in a state of near collapse from sleeplessness and tension. Führer, the reply. I thank you for your letter. I hope the German-Soviet non-aggression pact marks a decided turn for the better in our relations. The Soviet government agrees to have von Ribbentrop's arrival in Moscow on August the 23rd. Wir wissen, wie sehr ich mich bemüht habe, den Frieden zu erhalten. In meinen Verhandlungen mit der Staatsführung von Polen habe ich in gutem Glauben sehr bescheidene Forderungen gestellt. Die Weltöffentlichkeit soll wissen, dass ich allein ein solch großzügiges Angebot machen konnte, bei der ich die Missbilligung von Millionen deutscher Menschen riskiert habe. Es wurde abgelehnt. Meine Friedensliebe und meine unendliche Langmut soll man nicht mit Schwäche oder gar mit Feigheit verwechseln. Ich habe mich daher entschlossen, mit Polen in der gleichen Sprache zu sprechen, in der Polen uns seit Monaten konfrontiert. hat heute Nacht zum ersten Mal auf unserem eigenen Territorium auch mit bereits regulären Soldaten geschossen. Seit 5.45 Uhr wird jetzt zurückgeschossen und von nun an wird Bombe mit Bombe verhalten. Ich habe damit weder jenen Rock angezogen, der mir einst der heiligste und teuerste war. Ich werde ihn nur ausziehen nach dem Sieg oder ich werde dieses Ende nicht erleben. Ich möchte Ihnen jetzt noch mein Bekenntnis ins Gedächtnis rufen, dass ich damals, als ich meinen Kampf um die Macht im Reich begann, 
ablegte. Ich werde es Ihnen hier vorlesen. Wenn unser Wille so stark ist, dass keine Not ihn mehr zu zwingen vermag, dann wird unser Wille und unser deutscher Stahl auch jede Not meistern. Deutschland, Sieg heil! Unser Führer, Adolf Hitler, Sieg heil! Sieg heil! Sieg heil! Blaff. Endlich hat er den Blaff, den Blaff der Franzosen und Engländer aufgedeckt. Sie marschieren doch nie. Das werden wir bald wissen. Two days have passed since the German army attacked Poland. England and France have not yet moved. The British ambassador has just delivered a message to Ribbentrop's official interpreter, Paul Schmidt, at the foreign ministry. Schmidt is rushing the secret paper to Hitler and his advisors at the Chancellery. Oh well, Ribbentrop. Just the essentials. This government's note of September 1st notified the German government that unless German troops were promptly withdrawn from Poland, Great Britain intended to fulfill its obligations to Poland. No reply has been received. German attacks upon Poland have intensified. Unless not later than 11 a.m. today, satisfactory assurances have reached His Majesty's government in London, a state of war will exist between the two countries as from that hour. What now? I assume the French will hand in a similar ultimatum within the hour. If we lose this war, may God have mercy on us. In two months, Poland will be finished. Then we'll have a great peace conference with the Western powers. I shall now go to the front. In short, the West has shown itself spineless and impotent. The tide is with us. The time to strike is now. You saw how the British and the French reacted to the Polish war. Nothing but talk. No one was really ready to fight. September 29th, 1939. The leaders of the German armed services, fresh from their great triumph in Poland, are summoned for an urgent night meeting with Adolf Hitler. Prepare to execute Case Yellow. We attack France in full force in November. November? Five weeks from now. Mein Führer, the Luftwaffe is ready and eager for that battle. Führer, the transfer of the entire Wehrmacht to the Western Front is a colossal logistical problem. It can be done. Five months would not be too long. Nonsense. You exaggerate. My decision is irrevocable. We attack in the West. Case Yellow will go forward. Not later than November 12th. That is all.
General Brahe has been summoned to a meeting with Hitler. He carries a memorandum signed by all the leaders of the German army asserting that an attack against France at this time is impossible. German army headquarters in Zossen, on the outskirts of Berlin. The generals tensely wait for word from Brauchitz. I must confide in you on a very serious matter. I have been approached by certain, by certain army personages of the loftiest rank and prestige with a frightening proposal. They were talking high treason. Now I will confide in you. So, what is new in all this? Führer, it is the army's final position. Case Yellow cannot proceed. Why not? Because of the military fundamentals as stated. Such as? The season, to begin with. The meteorologists predict continuous soaking rains for weeks. It rains on the enemy, too. The conspiracy has been going on that long? Since Czechoslovakia? If the British had not caved in at Munich, perhaps. Who knows? But they did. And ever since then, ever since his big triumph, it has been hopeless. Hopeless. Empty talk, talk, talk. I am staggered. I'm a hundred times. I myself could have shot the man. I can steal it any time. But what would result? Chaos. The people are for him. He has unified the country. We have stand to our posts and save him from making military mistakes. But we really cannot proceed with Case Yellow. Brauchitz will get a postponement. And if he does not? Führer, even the supply of artillery shells is totally inadequate. Who says so? General Thomas, my chief of economics and armaments. Do you know? How many artillery shells of all calibers we have in the staging areas right this minute? No. How many we have in the reserve dumps in the West? It's up to my staff to read. What the monthly annual production of shells is? What the projected rise is in production for the next six months, month by month? Who keeps such figures in his head? I do! The supply is adequate. I tell you so. And I'm a field soldier who depended on artillery for four years to protect his life. Check with your staff. If one of those figures is wrong, you can postpone case yellow. Otherwise, you watch. And next time you come to see me, know what you're talking about. I 
if we if we march unprepared as we are, the fetus will run rampant. It will destroy the Wehrmacht and the fatherland. The morale of the army was low, even in the Polish campaign against an enemy in collapse. You're questioning to me? To me! The courage of the German soldier? I'm talking facts. What facts? Back up this monstrous assertion. Well, I... In what units was morale low? What action was taken? How many death sentences were handed out for cowardice? Speak up! I'll fly to the front and pass the death sentences myself. Name one instance of failure of nerve. One specific instance. I... Uh, instances? It was common knowledge. Common knowledge? What is common knowledge is that army headquarters at Sassen crawls with cowards. You opposed me on rearming the Rhineland. You opposed me on the Anschluss with Austria. You opposed me on Czechoslovakia until the British came crawling to me. You dirted in your trousers, you heroes of Sassen, at the idea of marching into Poland. Well, have I once been wrong? Have you once been right? Answer me! Mein Führer. I know your go slow tactics. I know your assassin tricks, your assassin schemes, your assassin ideas. Tell everyone who signed this insubordinate assassin rubbish to be there. Well, ruthlessly crush everybody up to the rank of a field marshal who dares to oppose me. You do not have to understand. You only have to obey. The German people understand me. I am Germany. Before Case Yellow, the attack on France, and Adolf Hitler tours the Western Front. The same everywhere? On every staging area along the front here. The latest meteorological report? No let up for at least two weeks. Are you prepared to march nevertheless? My Führer, the army awaits your orders. Postponed. This will be the first of 19 postponements of Case Yellow. Tanelli, amerikanischer Bankier, und Kapitän Victor Henry, amerikanischer Marineattaché in Berlin, zwar höchst informelle Emissäre, mein Führer, vom Präsidenten der Vereinigten Staaten, als Vorbereiter für die Sumner Wells Friedensmission.
Herr Reichskanzler, mit großer Besorgnis. Ihr geschätzter Präsident, Herr Giannelli, scheint ein bemerkenswertes Verantwortungsgefühl für den gesamten gegenwärtigen Verlauf der Weltgeschichte zu empfinden. Ich bin mir wohl bewusst, dass Ihr Land eine doppelt so große Bevölkerung hat als das unsere, als unser kleines Reich. Bei mehr als dem 15-fachen Lebensraum und unendlich mehr Bodenschützen. Vielleicht ist das der Grund, warum Ihr Präsident Was? meint, er könne mir von Der Zeit Ort. zu Zeit, ja, Präsident feels that from time to time he must give me those stern fatherly admonitions. But of course I'm giving up my life for the renaissance of my people. And I cannot help seeing things from that limited point of view. Germany's political aims are simple, open, moderate, and unchanging. Five centuries before Columbus discovered America, there was a German empire at the heart of Europe. War has come over and over to this heartland through the attempts of many powers to fragment the vigorous German people. And often their attempts have had temporary success. But the German nation, with its strong instinct for survival, has time and time rallied and thrown off the foreign petitioners. And so I restored the Rhineland. I brought back Austria into the Reich. I normalized the Bohemian Plateau. And the manufactured monstrosity of Czechoslovakia has once again become the traditional protectorate of the Reich. Now this restoration of Norman Germany is complete. And it has been done almost without bloodshed. Only Britain's foolish guarantee to Poland forced on me the brief police action to solve the Polish question. I share the president's desire for peace. I hunger and yearn for it. I was born to create, not to destroy. I'm an artist, a builder. But the British and French leaders called for the destruction of Hitlerism. I have made Germany strong again, and that does not suit them. But with their hate, if persisted in, will doom Europe, because I and the German people cannot be separated. We are one. This is a simple truth, so I fear it'll need a test of fire to prove it. How can they be so blind? I achieved air parity in 1937. Since then, I have not stopped building planes, 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 U-boats, U-boats, U-boats. I filed bombs, 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 tanks, tanks, tanks to the sky. What a wasteful, staggering burden on my people. But our enemies understand no other language. Out of strength, I've offered the outstretched hand of peace. I was rejected, scorned, at the price of peace. Our foes demand my head. My people only laugh at such pathetic nonsense. I have done my utmost. And my conscience is clear before the bar of history. So let the test of fire come. Germany will emerge victorious. that we'll all go down together and Europe as we know it will cease to exist. I have no wish to return discourtesy for discourtesy. 
I would do anything for peace. But until the British will to destroy me, itself is destroyed. The only road to peace is through German victory. Anything else is irrelevant. I will continue to hope with all my heart for a last minute signal of sanity from the other side before the great cataclysm bursts in the world. Hitler's legions enter the city of light. Two days later, the French government sues for peace. of November 1918 succumbed the criminal pride of the German Empire, the vanquished by the free peoples which it tried to enslave. Have it blown up. Early in his rise to power, Hitler vowed to erase the shame of November 1918 at the place where the years of Germany's suffering had begun. He has kept his promise. It is his towering moment. Read the terms. Im Auftrag des Führers und obersten Befehlshabers der deutschen Wehrmacht habe ich Ihnen folgende Eröffnung zu machen. Im Vertrauen auf die vom amerikanischen Präsidenten Wilson dem Deutschen Reich gegebenen und von den alliierten Mächten gegebenen Zusicherungen hat die deutsche Wehrmacht im November 1918 die Waffen niedergelegt. Damit fand ein Krieg den Abschluss, das deutsche Volk und seine Regierung nicht gewollt hat. Wenn es trotz und auf einer Übermacht liegt er nicht in der Transport steamers heavily damaged by air attack. One invasion barge sank. An ammunition train blown up. Time is running out for Operation Sea Lion, the German invasion of Britain. Hitler must either go or not go within the next two weeks, or the weather over the channel will make it uncrossable. But Hitler vacillates, and the world waits for his decision. Mein Führer, it is obvious the RAF is in no way defeated. In fact, the increasing activity is destroying the invasion fleet at anchor. To mount Operation Sea Lion without control of the air or English ports would be suicide. One moment. I will guarantee total control of the air over the channel for Sea Lion. Reich Marshal, you once guaranteed that if a single bomb ever fell on Berlin, the German people could call you Maya. You are addressing the deputy leader of National Socialism, my successor. Should I fall in battle? Party comrade, Reichsmarschall Göring has smashed the British in the air. Magnificent performance, above all praise. Mein Führer, the army is ready. 
Get us over there. The army will undertake to march to London more quickly than we did to Warsaw. I do not want to march to London. Destroying the British Empire was never my aim. It's a stabilizing influence in the world. I said that in Mein Kampf. Let them recognize my hegemony and see that some suitable colonies, they can keep their empire. In any event, England is finished, beaten, down on her knees. London burns, British harbors burn. Out in the Atlantic, British ships go down under our torpedoings more and more every day. Churchill, it's finished. I know what you're thinking. Why then does Churchill not surrender? I'll tell you why. Because he still has two hopes. America and Russia. For America, I have nothing to fear. A mongrel country filled with niggers and Jews, always in turmoil. But the Soviet Union, that's a different story. Stalin waits like a spider for me to get embroiled in a channel crossing. He's praying for just that. While I was busy conquering France, he grabbed the piece of Romania and marched the Red Army to within a hundred miles of Presti, my only source of oil. And I stand six hundred miles from Presti. So I'll give you now the new and most secret objective of the armed forces. Operation Sea Lion is postponed indefinitely. You will make all preparations to smash the Soviet Union in a quick all-out summer campaign. One colossal stroke in the east. Smash Russia in six weeks and so bring England finally to her senses and end the war. All forces will report readiness to me not later than February the 15th, 1941. nightmare. The one thing he pledged never to do. He is a supreme military genius. He has always been right. Now, when our armed forces are at their peak, now is the time to settle with Russia. It is a grand prospect. We fight at last for a great cause, for Christian civilization against Bolshevism. Do we? Or do we turn east? Because Göring has not frightened the English into surrender. And because our leader fears the water. With the date for the invasion of Russia, Operation Barbarossa set for June 22nd. Adolf Hitler holds an intimate afternoon tea at Berchtesgaden. Finally, he is notified that the most important guest has just arrived. Summoned by the Führer, Gestapo Chief Heinrich Himmler is here to discuss a matter cloaked in such secrecy that only a handful of top Nazi leaders know of its existence. What's up out there, Himmler? Well, Himmler, let's hear. Mein Führer, 
The special action squads, we call them Einsatzgruppen, have been selected and reviewed by me personally. At a meeting of the highest secrecy, I myself address them and disclose their mission in the Soviet Union. What was the reaction? Immense enthusiasm. You sure? Was it genuine? These are picked SS men, mein Führer, National Socialists to the bone, screened. Former lawyers, physicians, police, civil servants, the cream of German manhood. How many in all? All told, 3,000 men and officers. They are just the organizers, my Führer. The local population will execute the job. We have been checking in Poland. Plenty of volunteers. A very positive report, Himmler. Come to the party. Have a little fun. Relax. You're working too hard, you know. The second day of the invasion. Adolf Hitler travels from Berlin to his new advanced army headquarters on the Eastern Front. To sum up, mein Führer, the General Leib has advanced north toward Leningrad as planned. Von Rundstedt has met with more resistance than anticipated in the southward direction toward Kiev, but the real surprise is in the center where Guderian's armor has penetrated 25 miles toward Minsk. 25 miles on the straight road to Moscow, through the heaviest border defenses and the frontline mass of the Red Army, and all in one day. At this rate, mein Führer, we will be in Minsk, one third of the way to Moscow in a week. It is starting out like Poland. Even better. What word from Himmler? We talked on the phone an hour ago. He's addressing the final meeting of Einsatzgruppen officers at this moment. They will then join up with their units. All four special action groups will jump off today. They will begin actions immediately in the border towns. Himmler will be sending in daily figures. I want to know those daily figures. Certainly, mein Führer. The first big figures, of course, will come from Minsk. It's a huge Jewish center. So begins the fulfillment of a dream. Of a heroic and glorious vision, mein Führer. A purified Europe. And in time, a purified world. Lately, I have neglected the dog most cruelly. Blundy. Good dog, Blundy. Good dog. Mankind will one day understand your lofty aims and honor you for them, mein Führer. <laughs> <laughs> 